Uh, my name is Sam Wilbanks, the district ranger at Sierraville Ranger District on the Tahoe National Forest. We're standing in the Cottonwood burn area. The Cottonwood fire burned in 1994, uh, 48, 49,000 acres. Uh, much of it totally destroyed and consumed by the fire. Massive reforestation effort underway uh, since then and we're standing in an area that has had intensive treatment over the years. In fact, this is a, a research area that we've put in uh, over the last uh, five or six years to test the efficacy of different treatment methods. And over here on the right, one of the big problems after these burns is that the brush seeds in the soil are stimulated by the fire. And uh, it comes back very rapidly, it's sort of mother, mother nature's way of capturing the site, protecting the site. It's, it's a good thing, it's not all a bad thing. But uh, uh, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. So the brush can, uh, if it comes back too thick, can crowd out the trees and inhibit their growth and, and, and prolong or even prevent them from coming back and, and, uh, and a conifer forest from coming back. Um, so one of the things we do is try to manage that, that uh, competition from the brush. Over here, uh, this area was uh, treated by hand Every, every single brush plant was clipped off at the ground level and all of the brush, all of the dead brush, were picked up and stacked out of this one acre plot stacked around the edge. And there it is right there, that's the dead brush. Uh, this is a snow brush and it's a sprouting species. So you can see that the brush has come back. In some areas it's uh, up to four feet, it's like four, four and a half feet. Uh, it's come back quite nicely from the from the uh, from the hand clipping. On this side of me, uh, the brush was uh, treated with a machine called a masticator that does almost the same thing. It it just chews up the brush plant instead of clipping it off and moving it out. It just chews it up and kind of spreads out the the chips of the of the of the plants. Uh, in this area. Uh, the, the, the brush started to sprout back. It got up to about two feet, uh, 18 inches to two feet, and then we came in here and made a uh, application of herbicide. So we killed most of the brush, not all of it, but most of it. And as you can see, uh, the, the the brush is not nearly the problem over here as it is over here. Uh, there's a marked difference in also the growth rates of the trees. So these trees over here are growing faster. Uh, not only taller but bigger around faster, their bark is thickening more quickly, the fuel loading is lighter over here, so if we were to have a fire in the summertime right in here, you would see a, a dramatic difference in the survival of these plantation trees over here versus the trees over here. Uh, fire that would consume that brush would basically consume all the trees with it over here. Some of the trees no doubtly, undoubtedly would be killed, but most would probably survive, so that's part of the part of what we're trying to do out here. But as you can see, no trees, no other species except Ceanothus pollutinus. And if you do find a tree, which I think I see one in here, it is alive. But, doing all right, but it's pretty skinny. Um, it'll probably survive, but it's going to take a lot of years before it can get to the point of uh, shading out the rest of this brush. So we're going to have a fuels issue um, probably, if this is less untreated, probably through my lifetime. And this is how I would say, I don't know, 50% of the burn looks like, where there's just really no trees, a lot of brush, and uh, not a whole lot of means to treat it. So this area on uh, my left, your right, was uh, treated about, started treatment about 4, 000, or four years ago, in 2001. Uh, first it was the timber sale, removed some of the understory trees that were merchantable. Um, then we used some of that money that we made to go back in, clean up the smaller trees, and then also clean up the ground fuels. We put those smaller trees and ground fuels into small piles in between the trees, burned those off two years ago, 
and then that allowed us to come back in here a couple weeks ago and do a broadcast burn to take care of the rest of the fine fuels that remained on the ground. The interesting part about this area is that it used to look like this, where there has been no treatment as of yet, although it is planned. Quite a difference. If uh, you can imagine a fire moving through this area at this point, it would pretty much consume just about everything you see here, including the tallest trees. And we would have uh, something that looked something that looks really similar to what the cottonwood looks now. Uh, nothing would be left and most likely brush would come back and dominate. So the idea is uh, we treat it, make it look like this, make it resilient to fire, and we'll never have that site condition. Site condition change, I should say.